Whoever thought of the concept inner beauty is more important than physical beauty is an idiot and probably ugly. Conservative women tend to be dismissed by the left as plain Jane, sexually insipid, deficient entities who are happy to hand control of their bodies over to men. That, or they think we're just a bunch of plastics whose only interest in life is being thin and pretty to make sure that boys want to date us while being woefully dumb. They just want boys to like them, that's why they're not feminists. That is, when they're not denying that we exist altogether. Like and subscribe to make sure I keep existing. Because of their efforts during the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s, the left thinks they have the monopoly on female sexual empowerment, as well as the beauty plus brains female archetype. And sure, many of the world's most beautiful and sexiest actresses tend to be ragingly left wing. However, the reality is there are this many of them. versus this many of the others. But hey, don't take my word for it, just ask the experts. Two studies in 2017, one from the Journal of Public Economics, the other from the Politics and the Life Sciences Journal, concluded that there was an appearance gap between those on the right and those on the left. The conclusion both studies came to was that this appearance gap was the result of the fact beautiful people tend to earn more money. And the more money people earn, the more they are likely to oppose redistributive left-wing policies. They also credited the halo effect as a contributing factor. That is, pretty people are perceived as more intelligent, more trustworthy, and more socially adept than less attractive people. Therefore, they've probably been treated better throughout the course of their lives, and therefore less likely to oppose unfairness. Additionally, a 2012 study from the University of California, Los Angeles found that women with more quintessentially feminine facial features tended to vote Republican, whereas women with masculine features unsurprisingly swung Democrat. Researchers put this very prominent disparity down to the alleged policies and values displayed by each political party. The Democratic Party is associated with socially liberal policies that aim to diminish gender disparities, whereas the Republican Party is associated with socially conservative policy issues that tend to bolster traditional sex roles. These policy platforms are manifest in each party's image, apparently also in the physical characteristics exhibited by politicians. They're so oppressed by traditional gender roles that they don't even know they're oppressed! In this rather insidious way, the researchers at UCLA are gently nudging forward the left feminist theory that conservative women are bred to be ditzy housewives whose political preferences are dictated by their misogynistic husbands. They can be pretty, but not smart. They're only conservative because they want attention. Now this was outlined pretty succinctly by Lindy West for Jezebel. American conservatism is profoundly tied up with the old-fashioned gender paradigm in which husbands are active providers and women are passive nurturers. In that paradigm, a woman's job, the core of her femininity, is to make herself as pretty as possible and then sit back and wait to be picked. That is a deeply conservative idea. Don't they know the patriarchy is oppressing them and they're just letting it? And beyond that, the fact that it's something of a conservative mandate to be pretty encourages conservative women, no matter what physical hand they're dealt, to make signaling pretty a top priority. As the left like to say, let's unpack this. Let's just unpack this, okay? The verdict from all three studies was the conservatives tend to be better looking than leftists because their good looks and allegedly subsequently easier lives cause them to have an ethical blind spot, thus making them less empathetic, less thoughtful people. So in other words, the studies are asserting that conservatives are simply nastier, dumber and more selfish than the rest of the population. And as for conservative women, well, it's like they think we're something out of Mean Girls. Where are the plastics? They're teen royalty. If North Shore was Us Weekly, they would always be on the cover. That one there, that's Karen Smith. She is one of the dumbest girls you will ever meet. And that little one, that's Gretchen Wieners. 
She's totally rich because her dad invented toaster strudel. Okay, um, what's happening? And evil takes a human form in Regina George. Nah, I'll be cool, because she may seem like your typical selfish, backstabbing, slut-faced hoe bag, but in reality, she is so much more than that. She's the queen bee, the star. Those other two are just her little workers. Regina George. How do I even begin to explain Regina George? So, what could influence these researchers to smugly make such judgments about such a subjective topic? Well, the fact that the conductors of all three studies came from the radically regressive leftist world of academia may have something to do with it. Yes, people benefiting financially from the halo effect could certainly oppose redistributive policies. However, that would only account for about the top 10% of conservatives. And considering the ugly leftist billionaires out there, the image of the inherently right-wing rich fat cat is a little bit passé. Especially when you consider the millions of working class Americans who voted for Donald Trump. So, in actual fact, the reason that these nerds from the journals and UCLA have drawn this very cynical conclusion is because they're embarrassed and annoyed that their side is the ugly side of politics. And, as per usual, the left-wing knee-jerk reaction to things they don't like is to desperately clutch at the intellectual and moral high ground in order to deflect from their deficiencies. But here's the truth. The reason for the hotness gap between the left and the right is because conservatives, and especially the ladies, are perfectly happy to let men be men and women be women. Conservative women do not shy away from the concept of femininity because we do not see it as inferior to masculinity. It is so unbelievably ironic that a movement that claims to celebrate women can be so totally against the characteristics that make women, well, women, both psychologically and biologically. Conservative women are not closeted men. We draw a lot of satisfaction from our unashamed womanliness. And we learnt long ago that with unbridled femininity comes unbridled power. This leads me to the key ingredient that lures the world's great beauties to err on the side of right. Call it the halo effect if you want, but pretty women tend to have more confidence on average than less attractive ladies. So why on earth would any confident woman be attracted to the cesspool of victimhood, misery and emotional turmoil that is the feminist sisterhood? Especially given feminists' nasty little habit of bullying pretty women for the original sin of being hotter than they are. You're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? However, it's not just good looks that conservatives tend to have an unassuming monopoly on. The same applies to fantastic sex. A 2016 survey of 19,000 people in the UK, France, Germany, Sweden and Denmark found participants who described themselves as conservatives were much more likely to be sexually satisfied. The further you lent to the right, the more sexually satisfied you are. So why is this? Well, to the conservative way of thinking, sex is not considered some inherent essential statement of empowerment. Sex is just that. Sex. And given the fact that conservatives tend to be a little bit traditionalist to varying degrees, it's generally undertaken with a trusted partner in a steady, monogamous relationship. Which, funnily enough, is always going to be more satisfying than the left-wing hangover from the sexual revolution, when the idea of sex as something to be valued was tossed aside for morality-free, no-strings-attached hookup culture. The right defines sexual ownership as chivalry, romance, and meaningful, loving relationships, which are the secret ingredients to satisfying intercourse. The left, by contrast, sees sexual ownership as an icky mixture of hashtags, slut walks, and shrieking about objectification. Not to mention the cognitive dissonance of claiming to reject putting moral standards on sexuality while at the same time engaging in the slum prudery of affirmative consent and sexual consent contracts. Considering all of that, of course conservatives are going to enjoy sex more on average. That's a no-brainer. There was most certainly a time where the sumptuous, sexy class of woman was indeed populated by feminists, but that was decades ago. 
The problem is, leftists still see themselves as owning this cultural space, despite all indications to the contrary. In the words of political commentator Michael Knowles, leftism is a narcissistic, materialist ideology, and selfish sex in which the flesh is treated merely as flesh is almost always unsatisfying. Sex that is giving, concerned with the other person, and treats the body as it ought to be treated, which is as a symbol of the soul, is far more gratifying. So, next time a leftist gleefully cackles that conservative women are plain Jane, socially submissive, sex-deprived virgins under the thumb of men, or just a bunch of mean girls capitulating to the patriarchy, they're all just a bunch of mean girls. Roll your eyes and present them with the facts. After all, aren't facts the trademark of conservative thought? If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then why not pledge at my Patreon? The link is in the video description.